are. Um, they did, yeah, I did switch those. Okay, so it's the second game in Star Series Pro League, Pro Pro Ladder even, uh, with Kita Gaming versus the Tough Bananas. Tough Bananas being on the Dire side, Kita Gaming on the Radiant side. Uh, it's the best out of three, I just said. This is the second game. First game was taken very convincingly by Kita Gaming. We're gonna see if they're gonna be able to take that to do that again, uh, or if Tough Bananas uh, can get the win and force a third game out of this. That's the deal at the moment. And we have a ban already from the Lycan, we have a ban from the Tidehunter, from the Windrunner. Doesn't look like Kita Gaming is wasting any time banning. Quite nice to s or quite unexpected to see them... Uh, oh, I will, I'll do this next, this time, I forgot to do that last time, there we go. Uh, they're banning out heroes that they had picked in a previous game, so... Uh, they had a Tidehunter and they had a... I think they had a Tidehunter at least. They definitely had a tight under. They also had a windrunner, uh, or at least the windrunner was in the other team. Yeah, windrunner was for TTB. Uh, so we're gonna have some different setups this game because already uh, two heroes are banned out that were in the previous game. Uh, Furion is being banned out as well. Not that surprising. We still have Invoker and we still have Chen in uh, Darkseer. There's a lot of possibilities here for uh, for pickups or bans. Ten seconds remaining. And uh, let's see what uh, what Kitty Game is gonna ban out next. Just taking a sip of water. They're gonna go into reserve time for this pick uh, ban. Um, it's a it's a very uh, tactical ban that they have to do. It's a they're gonna ban Elishrak, a strong hero that they didn't want to have as a first pick, uh, but they don't want to play for him either. So. Uh, that will leave it up to Calculus to decide if it's going to be a lone druid maybe going through, if it's going to be an evoker going through, if it's going to be a Chen going through, or if all those three heroes go, tr go through so Calculus can pick up two out of three. Uh, that could be very possible too. Uh, and it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a tactical part of the draft. Ten seconds remaining. There we go. Evoker going uh, not to, going to not be in here. Darkseer is being the first pickup. Lone Druid is therefore still in, as is Chen. Uh, two very strong heroes, two very strong pushing heroes also. Yeah, we might see Lone Druid. Lone Druid would be fun. But they are not sure yet what heroes to pick up. I mean, there's also, of course, other heroes to in the pool that they might want to have instead. Um, I hope they don't want to go for an Enigma anymore, even though uh, his solo laning went pretty well. Um, they might want to go for for uh, something like a Queen of Pain, just to have that solo lane secured. Uh, or they want to go for a teamfight hero. I mean, Darkseer is there, is there on the Radiant now. Uh, they might want to have some teamfight in return, so maybe an Earthshaker or a Sand King. But as, a, as the first two picks, I don't know if it's going to be that. It's going to be a Beastmaster instead, uh, next to the Chen. And uh, yeah, just solid pickup. He can, uh, he can solo lane and they will have a Chen in the forest. Um, that will leave Lone Druid still there. So he will be probably picked up, I would assume, because he is a super strong hero. I've seen him push, uh, push out a lot, at, uh, a lot of towers, especially if the bear cut some items and Radiance is there. He will, yeah, he will be able to push, he will be able to, to chase, he will, will be able to do almost anything. It's going to be a Sand King instead though, and an Enigma. So, Kita Gaming lining up three solid team fight heroes after each other. I mean, the Darkseer with the Darkseer World, Epicenter, Black Hole is there. I talked about Black Hole Radiant and Epicenter in the previous game. Radiant super team strong, team. super strong team fight right there. They do need to force those team fights though. Uh, they do need to make good use of that. And um, this, just this combination, um, if you imagine an Enigma's Black Hole with the Epicenter going through, uh, should bad. it be the case that not every hero is in the black hole or is in the epicenter don't worry you got the vacuum of the darks here making sure that everybody is in the same spot so that will be is that's yeah that's just super strong we see a vengeful spirit being picked up as the third pickup for the tough bananas vengeful spirit uh, and, and beastmaster having uh, those nice auras that stack uh, queen of pain being banned out Radiant as well as morphling so some uh, some um 
Yeah, some carry carry ban out. Actually, Shadow Shaman being banned out too, uh, because I think that uh, Kida knows that um, TTB doesn't have a second solo lane yet, uh, which they probably want to, especially since they have one in the forest. Uh, they do need that solo lane. Uh, Beastmaster is one of them. Um, and yeah, Vengeful Spirit will probably be on a dual lane with uh, with uh, someone else that's still being left to pick up. Last pick is coming up from TTB. They banned out the, the Queen of Pain because also... Well, actually, Darkseer can solo lane a side lane, Enigma can solo lane a side lane, and I've seen... Um, I've seen uh, Sand King being in the middle quite a bit, but they do need a support. They don't have a support yet. They could pick up a, a Crystal Maiden, uh, which would not be a bad pickup unless they want to run uh, one of their team fight uh, or want to run Enigma, for example, as a support. They're going to pick up a Mirana, also a solid side lane uh, with Enigma, then probably going to, into the forest um, just... Uh, yeah, just because he can. And uh, Chen will be in the forest too, so they will have ev even lanes. Uh, last or next pick is gonna be towards uh, TTB. They gonna they they're gonna need some uh, some team fight also. <laughs> I'm I'm quite curious what it's gonna be because they're gonna need a hell of a lot of team fight to be able to deal with uh, with the team fight coming up from the radiance. It's gonna be a draw ranger. I was not expecting her at all. It's it's a solid it's 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 a great carry. Uh, if she gets out if she gets her farm up enough, she will be able to do to do really well. I wonder if they're gonna try to lane her in the middle lane or if she's gonna dual lane with the vengeful spirit. Could be both possible, but we'll we'll see with the last pickup uh, from them in in a moment. Uh, first last pickup for Kita Gaming. Uh, they have. Everything apart from well, they could, they could still go for support. They could also still go exactly. for uh, well, anything actually. Maybe something with the stun. Maybe maybe a, maybe a Sven. Hmm. That's, that's a bit of a strange call. Maybe they 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 can go for a lot though. They could yeah they could do uh, we'll a crystal, crystal maiden. maiden. Yeah, support. Okay, so I did say that. Yay! Once again. I like being right. Did I mention that yet? I did. The last pick is going uh, go for the t tough bananas, and their pickup. Uh, well, I'm not sure what to make of their lineup. They could still go for a solo mid hero. Which one would that be? Maybe a shadow fiend or or uh, a shadow fiend or or a storm spirit or something like that. Or maybe even a Ricky. Ten seconds remaining. Maybe even a Ricky. We could have a fun time. Five seconds remaining. And Drow Ranger has a silence. Maybe, a, maybe a Death Prophet. That would be uh, nice as well. But yeah, the silence from Drow Ranger will at least make sure that, uh, well, that there might be a silence to to prevent a combination, deadly combination from ultimates in, incoming from uh, the Radiant. Uh, well, they could prevent that. So. Uh, yeah, their last pick. They they're gonna take their time for that, and it seems like they they need it. They have 50 seconds left to decide. It's probably discussing uh, what would be a good pickup. Death Prophet in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Storm Spirit or Shadow Fiend. I, I'm I'm calling those because they do have a have a nice impact with. Uh, I mean. Yeah, with the vortex from the shadow from the Storm Spirit. Ultimate from uh, Shadow Demon has some kind of form of ultimate. Uh, maybe even maybe even a warlock. Then you have an AoE stun also. And uh, the the heroes of the Radiance are a little bit squishy. Puck. It's gonna be Puck. Another silence for the Dire to pick up, and a good solo lane too. So I'm expecting Windrunner to be indeed in the middle probably, or the Beastmaster with uh, Puck on the side solo lane and. Uh, Eventual spirit with someone on the side lane. Hmm, might be wrong about that actually, but we'll see how that's gonna go. Uh, Puck, uh, they they have been playing Puck quite a bit, so and it did work out for them, I believe. And yeah, solid pickup for them. Let's just see uh, who's playing what for Akita Gaming. We have a uh, Wall Eater playing the Mirana with uh, Bonsai on the Crystal Maiden. Nika is playing the Dark Seer. Now. <laughs> Naraya, Nara, Nagaraya, Nagaraya is playing the Enigma, and uh, yeah, Quinks is playing on the Sand King. Jesus, sorry, Nagaraya. There you go. 
could do that. Uh, calculus are on the top, and is playing on the puck, uh, followed by Donkey. Uh, he just wants to place his wards first, and then uh, we'll take the the tangos later. Uh, tangos, I mean Iron Branch, of course. Uh, in the middle, we see a Beastmaster, Soul Lane, and uh, we're probably gonna see Chen in the force. Oh, sorry, Beastmaster is being played by S4. Uh, we're gonna probably see a Buller on the Chen in the jungle with Hip Hop Not Pop on the Vengeful Spirit. We saw him play that earlier today, very strong also. Um, and Balsam on the Drove Ranger. Uh, probably uh, gonna go uh, farm heavy as soon as, as fast as she can, as much as she can. And when with I say probably, I mean definitely because she does need that farm. Uh, but she will be if there's a solo lane of a Darkseer. Uh, let's see how the other lanes are looking. Rana is on the bottom lane with Crystal Main to help her out. Uh, we're probably going to see Enigma going into the forest once he denied a creep in the middle with Sand King in the middle. That was a little bit how I said it, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Donkey dropped the tangos and uh, is back to base. Hello, Haystrun. I think uh, it's going to go towards the puck because she would be faster than the Crystal Main. There we go. And uh, doing some uh, aggression on the Crystal Main who did just back her Frostbite just in case. Orb is going to fly through. There's the Frostbite, so she's able to get away. Uh, arrow is going to hit in the puck though. Um, that's going to be a long arrow. That's going to be quite a bit of damage on this puck here. Uh, he still has a haste rune though, so he will be able to back off quite fast, but a little bit of overextension, but did force out the south from the Crystal Main. And let's see how the middle lane is going to go. Two melee heroes fighting towards each other for those last hits. With uh, Sand King already specking into his caustic finale, being able to uh, to be a little bit more secure on the last hits and also to harass the Beastmaster a little bit like that. Axis will fly through, does a little bit, a little bit, a little bit of damage on the Sand King. Let's see on the top lane where Darkseer is gonna be versus uh, versus Dro and the and the Vengeful Spirit. What are they gonna do? I was gonna say. Um, well, Drow is not uh, planning on helping out, it seems. So it looks like uh, Vengeful Spirit is just going to take a little bit of a damage and, and back off. Uh, well, Darkseer is uh, is backing off also, putting on Iron Shell on the melee creeps. Um, he will keep that lane for f uh, pushed a little bit by it, but he will also have a maybe easier time to push out the... Or get... get well, easier time to get last hits, even though it's also easier for Drow to uh, anticipate when she can uh, deny the hits. So we'll see see uh, who's getting the better out of that lane. It's probably the Balsam skill of la last hitting uh, that will make that lane going. And with last hitting, it also means the denies, of course. Kalkil is going to check out if the bottom rune is going to go on this lane, but uh, Puck is having the same... Sorry, Enigma is having the same idea, and he picked up the double damage rune instead, and he was farming the force, and he's probably going to continue to do so this this time with a double damage rune. Uh, there we go. I'm doing a little bit, uh, well, doing a lot of damage actually. This micro manages from the epilons there. On. On for the epilons. On the epilons. Eidolons. Hmm. Don't know. Special Spirit wants to go for this. Wants to p get up a stun. No? No. They do see each other all the time. I mean, this is like a dance. There we go. Right click's going out. Beastmaster specking is a uh, well, not not surprising thing. He's only one uh, point in caustic finale for the sand for the sand king, and not specking it anymore uh, will not ha give that much harassment to on the beastmaster an anymore. But I guess it's going to find a way it is for him. Otherwise he pushes out the lane too fast also, which he doesn't want to do, obviously. Blink going off on the crystal main. Nee, nothing happening, I think. Dyer's top tower. And Marana has her Ring of Aquila complete. I think uh, that means... Let's see, Marana having 18 for 10 and Puck having 2 for 0. So Puck really not getting a lot this lane. And Marana, yeah, owning this lane uh, pretty hard. Uh, with a lot more gold and last hits than uh, Calculus is having. And uh, yay. Oh, nice puck out. Puck out. Sorry. We see a teleport back from the Beastmaster who uh, teleported away just uh, probably to, to get some extra regen. Because he did get 
harassed by the caustic finale and maybe a couple burst strikes. Probably. Burst strike level three, doing a lot of damage. Hello, Chen and, and his creeps. Nice, nah, they don't want to go for that. Invisibility room for the Sand King, able to use it when he when he thinks uh, it's a good thing. There's the burst strike, just harassing, just getting a last hit from it and just uh, harassing the Beastmaster a little bit. Mm, looks like this Dark Sea is out of region too, and he wants to have some region, so he's gonna heal up and teleport back towards the top lane. I um, don't think he's getting done all that much on this lane. It's uh, He's level 3, while uh, Ven uh, Windrun is level 5, so that's a huge difference to begin with. Um, well, Ventral Spirit is level 2, okay. It doesn't make that much of a difference for, for them, but... Um, that, ooh, stun goes off. Slow arrow is going off too. There is a surge. He will be able to just get away. Yeah, we'll be fine. Uh, but but he is 15 for 0, while Dro is 18 for 5. Oh, I have to say that I was expecting Dro to be up higher than that. It, it looked to me like he she has basically free farm. So I'm, I'm quite surprised that I see that. Uh, she does have 1200 gold, didn't buy anything yet. Oh, Visual Spirit taking a, lo a little bit of damage there. We might see a ganking coming uh, on the Beastmaster. It's going to be a shout out on uh, on the Sand King first, though. He's going to go down to the Beastmaster uh, with the Chen uh, helping out there. It's going to be a, a Maleficent on the Beastmaster, but the su support that was there with the Enigma and the Crystal Maiden that wanted to go for the Beastmaster was just too late. And uh, yeah, they they were a bit too too uh, not coordinated, I guess. So first lot going towards Beast ma Beastmaster, going towards uh, the Tough Bananas. And, uh, yeah, he will get his extra farm back. Beastmaster will be 31 for 4, while Sand King is being 28 for 4. Uh, not a lot of difference, and he actually got those last hits, uh, mostly probably because he's alone right now, uh, rather than for the Sand King who uh, has to had to be on his way back. Where did the Sand King go? There, there he went. He is invisible. He was invisible, he's gonna burn strike on the Draw Ranger, probably he has boots, so we'll be faster than her. And we'll probably be able to kill the Draw Ranger off pretty fast, she doesn't have anything to do. Uh, she didn't buy anything before she died, it's quite a shame, Balsam dying, and uh, losing some of his gold. Uh, most of his, all his gold is unreliable gold, so, yeah. Let's see uh, if this puck is uh, gonna have some issues here with the tri-lane versus him. And he just turned into uh, into a real trailer now, with Enigma being out of the forest. But no, that's not gonna do anything. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Oh, we've seen a, a blink on the Enigma, but doesn't seem like they can go for it yet. Everybody's a little bit slow. Beastmaster is not there, not having any mana. No mana on the puck either. Just being able to right click a little bit, and we see. A the smoke up on the Chen and the Vengeful Spirit. Hello. Let's see where they are going. It's like a gang squad. There's also smoke on the two setters that are there. Uh, not on full mana. There's uh, only five. Whoa. There's okay. There's only eight uh, shockwaves left in total on, on, on combined with the creeps. Um, Sand King might be in a little bit of trouble. He does have a sandstorm. Shout is there. Every sun is there. I, yeah. Shockwaves. Two shockwaves used. Beastmaster getting blasted. That wasn't a very surprising uh, surprising kill. And the double damage rune on the Beastmaster definitely helped out too. They will we'll be able to push in a little bit of the tower. And uh, it looks like uh, it looks like Radiance Enigma wants to defend that. But might have a tough time too because it's going to be 3 versus 1. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, oh, there's also the crystal main. Uh, we have a, uh, have a Maleficent on the Beastmaster taking a bit of damage. Burl Strike is there. You have a ho Holy Persuasion. Will he be able to be in time? Yes, he will be. Nice Holy Persuasion from the Chen. Uh, Frostbite on the Chen creep, but doesn't do anything for uh, for uh, the kills for them. But, yeah. Did I miss it? No. no, it's fine. I figured I might have missed a kill, but then I didn't, so it's cool. Seems Puck gonna help out a bit on the middle lane. Able to right click uh, Sand King a little bit. Let's take a look at the gold graphs. Uh, we have it 1k in advantage for Kita Gaming. And that's uh, that's all going to be farm. Let's see where that farm mostly is coming from. Oh, sorry. Let's see where that farm mostly is coming from. Uh, oh, it's pretty obvious. They have. Uh, it's, it's basically the fact that uh, the tough bananas don't have a jungle hero. That's the major difference there. 
I mean, Enigma is getting gold from the forest, so it's basically like they have four lanes, as they're getting gold from three lanes and the jungle, while the Tough Bananas are only getting gold from the three lanes and not from the jungle forest. Sorry. So that that's going to be that 1k difference, and, that, and that's going to be a huge difference. Uh, the Malphys goes off on the Beastmaster. He saw them coming, so I don't know why he stayed there. Uh, Black Hole is going to be there. And yeah, he's gonna die pretty fast and uh, last uh, hit. Oh, will he die actually? I thought he would die. The leap is not off for the Marana. He won't be able to chase it. I'm a bit surprised that he doesn't die from that. What? There was a black hole. There was a perfectly shot arrow. There was a Malefis. He should have died, theoretically. But he didn't. I can't really call that all that well played from S4, even though it did pop his charges in time, of course. But uh, he was just able to... Wait for his son to go off and then walk away. In the meantime, Dro kills off the Darkseer on the bottom lane, uh, top lane even. Um, probably with a little bit of help from the Vengeful Spirit. Wave of Terror. I'm gonna let you follow this puck in the meantime, because I think... Oh, never mind, the Beastmaster. Because I need another sip of water. So let's see um, who's gonna find the Sand King. Ooh, Puck is gonna find the Sand King. Arrow's gonna fly, it doesn't hit. Uh, Kirkle is taking a lot of damage, using his orb to uh, blink into the trees. Yeah, smart. He has to wait for his orb to be back up uh, before he goes away. Uh, he loses it. Illusion Rune activated by the Sand King, who has a bottle. Uh, but he's just gonna spam out, uh, gonna scout out. Uh, Chen got a tower in the middle lane. Again, the last hits. Uh, Secured with his creeps, probably too. And it looks like uh, Beastmaster and also Chen want to go out to the top lane and maybe get another kill on the, on the Dark Sphere. Let's see how Dark Sphere is doing. 17 for 1. Uh, the Drow did manage to kill him off once. Uh, ooh, shout going off. Frost arrows going off. Uh, silence is there too. Drow Ranger getting uh, the last hit on that. And yeah, that's gonna be a uh, super fast kill. Um, I was saying Drow has 53 for 12, so that's a lot of last hits on her on her account. Uh, we will see the gold dip back a bit to zero, um, making that gold difference that Enigma created a bit uh, obsolete. Uh, but that's also, of course, there was a tower down in the middle. So that's going to be a difference for that already. Last is going out in the tower. Last hits, wow. Right click's going out in the tower, and uh, they're going to be able to to push this tower pretty fast. There's no defense incoming from the Radiant. Uh, dark closest is the Dark Seer, who just put up an ISL just, just a little bit. Uh, but yeah, that's gonna be uh, not a lot of uh, trouble for it. And they, they want to go for this tower too. And they can do that. They they know that Crystal Maiden and Sand King are trying to take down the tier, two tier 1 tower in the middle, uh, which they will be able to definitely. They know Marana is still on the lane. And, and Darkseer basically can't go there by himself. Drew Ranger getting the last hit on the tower. Drew Ranger getting uh, some nice amount of farm. Has her Morbid Mask completed. And um, quick here to see. Uh, well, she probably will go for, uh, for Helm of the Dominator and then Satanic maybe. But. Yeah. It, she has quite a bit of farm for her doing. Let's see, almost 400 gold per minute, the same as the Beastmaster. So that is two heroes of over almost 400 gold per minute, while uh, Mirana on the highest of Kita Gaming is 385, uh, with uh, followed by the Sand King on the three, uh, 318. Oh, hello, incoming gank. Oh, Puck is in so much trouble right now. Arabs will hit, Mirana will get the last hit. Arrow, uh, last, uh, sorry, last arrow, yeah, well, it was last hit with the arrow, so last arrow. Uh, yeah, Puck didn't stand a chance there, and this tower is gonna go down very fast, and no defense is incoming from the Dire at the moment. Uh, but it's because also there's three heroes of the Dire on the top side. And with the top side, I mean top lane. Marana has a hand of minus completed. Uh, making her able to farm a lot faster now. And we see Enigma building towards the uh, mechanism. Uh, he's a bit far off still though. And the tier 2 tower is taking a lot of damage but won't go down. Yet. It's almost in the night range though. Shout going off on the crystal main. And frost arrows there for the crystal main too. Draw range again in the last hit of that. Silence is off on the sand king. 
Uh, you might want to do something. Parker's there locking two together. Black hole is off on the dark on the Drow Ranger. Arrow's going off. Moronic getting last hit on her. Jen's ultimate is there. Dark Seer Vacuum is there. And it looks like TTB is on the run from this. Malefice hits on the Chen, taking a lot of damage. I think there's a lot of mana. Yeah, there's mana on the on the Sand King. We'll see a Burrow Strike probably soon. Uh, or not. Sand King being on the run from uh, from the Dark Ranger. And uh, <laughs> everyone being on the run from everybody here. And there was a uh, it was an instant buyback from Drow who is now uh, is now back here. So good fast buyback. She has her um, Helm of the Dominator completed, and that is uh, tier one tower taking quite a bit of damage. It's still five versus five on this lane. Vacuum is there. Burst strike is there, hitting on three heroes. Veronica getting blasted on the Vengeful Spirit. Sending taking a little bit of damage, being silenced too. Puck is being uh, harassed by the by the Frost Nova. Ooh, ooh, Burrow Strike is gonna come out and then the, there we go. <laughs> on the Drow Ranger, it's gonna be Holy Persuade at home, but doesn't do so in time. Marana getting the last hit. So this Drow Ranger dying twice in a very short period of time. Marana is still on the run. Malefis is, uh, or Marana, wow, this is Chen being still on the run. And uh, Enigma getting the last hit with his Adelons on the Chen. And the only one dying there was the Sand King from the Radiant team. And from the others, I mean, we saw Drow die, we saw Puck die, we saw Drow die twice actually if in the long run. Uh, that's a uh, that's a lot of deaths. They could p push this tower now. Probably. Let's see how the gold. <laughs> wow. Let's gonna see. Let's see how this gold graph develops. And we see a very steep line up. Puck, why did you teleport in? Why? He did teleport in. Yeah, he did. Was a bit overconfident, I guess. Blink dagger on the Sand King uh, will help key the game also. Uh, so we see the. The gold graph chains up uh, very much with uh, 4k, 5k gold advantage within a couple of minutes, uh, purely by kills and towers also, of course. Uh, yeah, but it's uh, it it was very convincing. It's uh, not over yet though. Balsam is uh, gonna be able to get a lot more farm here now. With uh, the lane pushed out by the tower, he's uh, he has he has a whole range of this lane. Uh, all in his territory where creeps are gonna come in, come in and other people feel less inclined to gank him. Let's see, Enigma has finished his mechanism and also has uh, 1600 gold, 1700 now. Oh, I think uh, I think Mirana just bought something. Let's see. It's in Donkey. Double damage. Almost having her Mantis Tower completed. Blink Dagger on the Sand King will get silenced. Um, Drew Ranger is trying to get away from this. Um, won't be able to. Burst Strike is going to be there. Chance Ultimate is going to be there, but she is not going to be able to stay alive. Crystal Main getting the last hit. Crystal, or sorry, Vengeful Spirit trying to get out also. Won't be able to do so. Sand King getting the last hit on her. And that was a uh, failed save. A uh, failed, uh, yeah. Failed trying to save action from uh, from the Dire. It looks like they might be getting a little bit tired, maybe. Making uh, silly mistakes about teleporting in and, and going back. Burrow Strike uh, killing off the creep wave. They want to go for this tier 2 tower. Tornado from the Chen is up, as in from the creep from Chen. Uh, will be a little bit annoying, especially for the Eidolons taking some damage from that. Uh, but it also gives vision, as we know. There he is. Pipe is completed on the beast mass, it will make a difference. Let's see if we see some other items that I missed. We have a mech completed on the Chen too, so on the Chen as well as an, on Enigma. We saw the items on Marana already. Let's see. Hello Crystal Main, what do you have for us? She's uh, trying to complete her wand and trying to finish off some, uh, some heroes in the meantime. Frostbiting them, because she can. Gold graph is uh, stabilizing a little bit around uh, seven and a half k gold um, advantage for for Kita Gaming. Let's check out the experience graph. Oh, experience graph is about the same actually. Experience and experience graph is about the same. So, considering TTB doesn't have that strong team fight, I mean, they have the shout from the Beastmaster and they have the Chen's ultimate, but that's mostly yeah, it's not really. Uh, as powerful as, for example, a black hole and an epicenter, and a, and a dark seer wall and a vacuum inside a black hole. So you know, 
uh, yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, TTB really needs to pick off heroes singly and not go on five versus five because they won't make it. They won't make a five versus five at the moment because they just don't have enough team fight potential. They don't have enough team fight abilities. Rana ultimate is uh, activated. Let's see if uh, they're gonna find someone out. Bar strike is there on the draw range. Dark Sea Wall is there. Fakey or Fakey was not there, but Epicenter is there. And Shout is going off on the Sand King, so Epicenter didn't hit anything. The Sand King will go down for it pretty fast. And then uh, copy from Chen is gonna go down. Black Hole is there, catching Draw Ranger and Vengeful Spirit, who will both go down. Double kill for the Dark Sea, Crystal Main killing off the Vengeful can last it on the Vengeful Spirit. Calculus going down very fast too. And uh, if we see Sand King, or we didn't see, but we Sand King bought back into the game. Chen is the only one to stay alive from the Dire. So it was 1 4 4 with, with the buyback, so Sand King buying back. And that's. That's just what I just said. They, d they shouldn't go on 5 on 5 because even though the epicenter was waited, wasted, the black hole wasn't wasted, the dark seer wall wasn't wasted. And that's just that they don't have that much team fight potential. They, they don't have that much team burst as the other team has. Faking was there. She uses, uh, or uses her son to get away from the, or to get the, the creep that has iron shell on her. In the meantime, this tier 2 tower is looking to be the next target. Could very well be. Blinks are out there though. Let's see. Enigma has a blink too then. Yeah. Enigma and Sand King have, have a blink there. Let's see if I missed something else. A mental style is now complete on the Marana. We didn't see that yet. Uh, we did see the items though, so not that surprising. Um, Darkseer's pipe is finished. Same as for Beastmaster's pipe, which we already saw. And uh, Apart from the help, the help of the Dominator, Draw Ranger doesn't have anything new yet. So she and she she does need that, but she she has the power to turn this game around if she gets uh, gets enough farm. Let's see where this smoke is gonna take them. Following them around. Uh, <laughs> other team is smoked up too, though. And they're both looking in the wrong places. Although uh, Puck is showing himself, so they might want to go for the Puck instead. And it looks like they want to go for, for Roshan. They will be able to do so. I am going to follow the um, Puck, because I think he will be ganked soon. There we go, Burr Strike is there. Arrow is going to probably uh, also land. Never mind, no arrow needed. Darkseer getting the last hit. Nah, no, yeah. That was not very surprising. Uh, Roshan is about to go down. There we go. Drew picks up the Aegis. And uh, let's hope they bring it. There's the epicenter. Surge is there too on the on the Sand King. Uh, being able to do a lot of damage. Beastmaster took a lot of damage also. Is is still being forced uh, back. Shouts on uh, on Quicks on the Sand King. Um, is able to get away. Uh, we did see Puck dying. Yeah, we already saw Puck dying earlier on the lane. Never mind. A nice block from Quicks, uh, able to get some damage up on the draw range, who still has an Aegis, so we'll still be able to get away from that, uh, or theoretically. Because there is a Malefiz and there is a Frostbite, there we go, Frostbite is there, and uh, Malefiz is there too, Burst Strike is there, Sand King can last it on that. Beastmaster being in a little bit of trouble, but he will be able to force uh, to, to get back, to be forced back. And that's, uh, that's 2 for 0, actually 3 for 0 if you count the Aegis. And, um... Uh, if you count Puck, it was even 4 for 0. Then this gold graph is looking um, pretty strong for Kida still. Um, over 10k in advantage for uh, Kida Gaming. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Let's see. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Beastmaster seems to be wanting to push this tier 1 tower by himself. Uh, even though I think he's probably needed on this tier 3 tower. Because it looks like Kida wants to push in here. Uh, they know that uh, Puck is not there. They know that Beastmaster is not there. Or they don't... Well, they're not gonna go in. We have a teleport from around on the tier 1 tower. They don't want to lose the tier 1 tower. Okay, that's fair enough. That is fair enough. Let's see some of the experience graph. 14k advantage. It's it's a solid lineup. It's a solid lineup for Kita Gaming. 
the same goes for the gold graph, even though it was a little bit uh, in favor of uh, tough bananas at some point, but now it's 12k uh, difference, and that's uh, gonna be tricky for TTB to get back from. Even though it's still possible, I mean the drow, the drow is pro probably able to do uh, to do a lot of that. They want to go for something. Nope, they don't. Saw some links, but then nothing happened. I'm gonna take another sip of water. I'm sorry. Now it's now it's empty. Okay. So everybody of Kitty Gaming is on this top lane. Uh, this is actually the last lane where they still have a tower standing, and um, they want to tower down. Never mind. Tower is down. Tower has been denied by Puck. Uh, so no towers left apart from the tier three and tier four towers for uh, Kitty Gaming to to demolish. Uh, that's some easy gold that they could have had, uh, which they still did because of course you still get the gold. You just don't get the last hit. We see um oh gem of true sight on the crystal main. Uh she probably uses it mostly to counterboard. And that's um that's all fine. But I'm quite surprised since nobody has a shadow blade. It's, it's just it's really just for smokes and for Radiant <gasps> Hello, Beastmaster. Beastmaster getting a burst strike. He's gonna go down very fast. Rana taking the Sand King take the last hit. I really thought it was gonna be Rana with the two uh, illusions there. And uh, yeah, we see uh, Puck being in a lot of trouble. Also being right click down. Does use the. <laughs> yeah, it's not able to, to uh, get away from that. And that's uh, two fast skills for Kita Gaming, and they're they're taking their opportunity, they're taking their chance. They're gonna push into this tier three tower. We'll be able to do so. Not a lot of resistance is probably outcoming from the Dyer since they have lost two of their members for another 20 seconds. I was gonna fly to scout the way. Nothing there, apart from a Chen and a couple of creeps, and uh, Vengeful Spirit. And we gotta wait for a creep wave. It's taking long. There you go. If you're going down very fast, tornado is there from the gen creeps. Nice, Wildkin. Yeah, there it is. And the uh, frostbite is gonna be on the on the tornado, Wildkin. So the tornado is gone. Uh, tower taking a little bit of damage. Doesn't seem like they want to go for some kills, even though uh, Darkseer is in a little bit of trouble. Silence is there. Axis will fly through. Tower is uh, on half half life, but they uh, they managed to defend it. If they do it again though, if, they, if they're gonna do the same push in again, they will be able to take another half of the tower and the tower will be dead. That's all they need to do. 15k gold advantage for Kita Gaming. Let's see, every, uh, every ultimate is on cooldown. Arrow hits on Ursa Warrior. This looks like they want to go for it. They, they are looking, waiting for the, the right spot to go in for and they, they don't find it so they're gonna go back they're gonna go push out all the lanes Ron is gonna continue farming Ron who actually has finished her uh, monkey king bar now let's see if we see them oh did we see that did we see that yeah we saw uh, a ultimate orb up on the enigma so I wonder what he's gonna buy from that mm. I'm gonna guess the side advice it's the only thing that seems logical hey. I hear a bar strike. Arrow doesn't hit on the Marana. Uh, oh, sorry, on the Draw Ranger. Still trying to get away. Ooh, Shout is there on the Marana. Taking a lot of damage. Marana going down very fast to the Draw Ranger, getting the last hit. <laughs> nice job on uh, backing up the, the, the Draw Ranger, who would have probably un otherwise died. Uh, now with Moran out of the picture for a little while, I wonder if they're uh, gonna try to, uh, to take a team fight or try to push in. I mean, there's still uh, ooh, I was gonna say there's still smoke up. Bro strike in on the draw range. Who managed to put up a silence? Chance ultimate is there. Black hole is there. Catches three of them. Both draw, draw vengeful spirit and beastmaster being caught in that. 
Uh, the pipe is up for the Radiant. Beastmaster taking a lot of damage with the Malefice on him, uh, stunning him constantly. Crystal Main getting the last hit on the Vengeful Spirit. Power Strike going off, doesn't hit anything but a, well, but a Hawk. It's, it's not bad either. And uh, so far only Vengeful Spirit uh, dying and saving or giving her life for the Beastmaster. Uh, not bad play from the Vengeful Spirit. Um, and actually, they, I'm quite surprised. They, they managed to get a black hole and catch three heroes in there and only managed to kill off the Vengeful Spirit. That's um, yeah, that's impressive. See so you draw building towards the BKB. She only needs uh, seven hundred gold or so to uh, to make the recipe. I was gonna say this arrow has, has little items, but it was a donkey that I had selected. Not very smart. See uh, Economic Scepter on the Sand King. And Droso has that. We already saw that. Puck has a blink dagger, able to uh, to go in and out again this time with his orb, or uh, first in then out, whichever he wants to. And uh, we already saw this, these items on the chin. Let's see what the beastmaster still got. Also, blink dagger on the beastmaster. Um, did we see that yet? I don't think we did. So we now have four blink daggers in the game: beastmaster, Puck, Enigma, and Sand King. And uh, they want to go for this. They definitely want to go for this. Uh, Black hole is not on cool. It's, it's off uh, on cooldown though. Wow, it, it's not off cooldown, so it's on cooldown. Yeah. Oh. Arrow hits on the beastmaster. He should have seen that coming. He did get hit by it still. Uh, no follow up though. He was on the higher ground. They didn't want to go for that, so they just back off and uh, wait for a creep wave and uh, might try again later. 60 seconds before the black hole is off cooldown. We do have the epicenter, we do have the dark sea wall, so they're not hopeless whatsoever. But, uh, yeah. Both teams are, are not getting any farm at the moment, they're, they're just waiting for something to happen. It's quite surprising. There we go, Marana being the first to break. Uh, 